Good morning, welcome to Secret London with me, Mark Munro, and today we're in Bloomsbury, more specifically in Marshmont Street. Now, when you're in a big city, it's always a good idea to look up because you're going to see a lot of things above your eye line that are very interesting. But here in Marshmont Street, it's a good idea to look down because the pavements around here tell a very interesting and profound story. objects that appear embedded in the pavement on Marshmont Street haven't been trodden in here over the years by pedestrians. They're actually part of a piece of public artwork by the artist John Oldos and they tell a story, a very profound story, that being the unimaginable grief that a mother had to endure when she was forced to give up her child. Behind me is a place in Bloomsbury called Corum Fields. Now, up until the 1920s, a hospital stood here. It was called the Foundling Hospital. It was founded by Thomas Corum and had benefactors such as William Hogarth, George Frederick Handel, and the Earl of Marshmont, of which Marshmont Street is named after where we've just come from. It was the first hospital in Britain for abandoned children of imperiled women. The gates behind me were the original entrance to the Foundling Hospital. And the Foundling Hospital was big. It covered an area of over seven acres. But now, like I said, they're renamed Corum Fields after Sir Thomas Corum, who founded the hospital. Corum Fields is a huge recreational park that is dedicated to the happiness and welfare of children, as you can see by the sign outside on the front gate. If you were growing up in London in the 1800s, life was pretty brutal, especially if you were a child. Only one in five children made it to their second birthday. And if disease swept through a community, the infant mortality rate could rise to over 75%. At one point in London, more people were dying than being baptised. So back to the objects we saw embedded in the pavement around the corner on Marshmont Street. Well, they're actually called tokens. When a mother came to the Foundling Hospital, and her child was accepted. The child would be given a unique number. The child would then be baptized and then given a new name. It was then time to say goodbye. The mother was asked to leave a keepsake, a memento, a token with the child. Now this could be anything. Sometimes it was something the mother had on her at that moment, a piece of fabric, a a thimble, a playing card, a note with something written on it, something that could magically connect her with the child. And it was essential that she remembered it in case she needed to come back and reclaim the child at a later date. So these tokens became a magical connection between mother and child. They were essentially symbols of love, loss, and of course, longing. Sadly, less than 2% of mothers came back to reclaim their child. Up to 1779, 15,000 children had been admitted into the Foundling Hospital. And tragically, 
70% of those had died. And because of the sheer numbers that were being admitted into the hospital, a ballot system was introduced to stem the flow of children arriving. Back on Marshmont Street, you might have noticed one of the slabs had three different coloured balls embedded in them. And this was a clue to how the ballot system worked. Essentially, the ballot system worked like this. On entering the hospital, the mother would be escorted to a darkened room, a room where the candles had been snubbed out to protect her anonymity. She would then put her hand in a bag and draw out a ball. If she drew out a white ball, then her child would be medically inspected. If it passed the inspection, then the child would be allowed into the hospital. If she drew out a red ball, then she was put on a white ball rejection list. If, however, she drew out a black ball, well, she was immediately escorted to the front door, to a future of who knows what. Just around the corner from Marshmont Street and Brunswick Square is the Foundling Museum. It's dedicated to the history of the Foundling Hospital. And interestingly, if you do visit, and it's well worth a visit, you can see the actual tokens that mothers left to reconnect themselves with their children. Thomas Coram understood that children should never have to suffer through dint of birth and unfortunate circumstance. Society as a collective had an obligation to protect their vulnerability and innocence. And it's because of this man behind me that we now have social support structures built in our society that care for children, most noticeably adoption agencies like the one behind me, Quorum Adoption. Moving into 2020, over three and a half thousand children will be adopted by Forever Families this year. And we thank those families for their selfless sacrifice to commit their lives to bringing up and giving a child a loving and caring and prosperous future. Thanks for watching today's episode of Secret London with me, Mark Munro. If you enjoyed today's episode, leave any comments down below. The good, the bad and the ugly, I read them all. Hit that thumbs up button and if you really enjoyed it, why not subscribe? Until next time, stay tuned. Stop, stop, stop.